Greetings, my name is Keith Michelson, and this is my personal networking crash course. Now I want to give this disclaimer for starters. I am a social studies teacher. That's me, the guy in the green shirt with the bald head helping those students. I am not a network administrator. When I started this project, my understanding of networking was vague, and now it is basic at best. So that's the perspective you're going to get, is a basic perspective of network. So let's start with a couple definitions. First, WAN versus LAN, or Wide Area Network versus Local Area Network. In the diagram you see here, you have four separate nodes, the home, hotel, remote office, and main office. Each of these separate nodes is operating on a LAN, or local area network. Systems are able to communicate in and of themselves. Then, when they go out beyond that into the public internet section, that place is the wide area network. Many wide area networks are either public access or available via some sort of special contract. Now, since my understanding of networking was elementary to begin with, I wanted to start with a more basic system before I started looking at a more complex system like the one at my school. So I started at my house. Now, like many of the typical house systems these days, mine is primarily wireless, and we connect a variety of devices via wireless signal to the internet via our ISP. We've got laptops, we've got our smart TV, tablet, game system, printer, and of course our regular desktop computer, all connected via either radio waves wirelessly or via direct cable in the case of the desktop computer. All of these signals are connected via the wireless router to the modem and then the modem connects to the internet service provider who connects us to the internet. So I'd like to talk really quickly about protocols before I move forward. Protocols are essentially the rules for communication on the internet. They govern the communications between computers on a network. And it comes in a seven layer system. However, we're gonna take a look at it and reduce it down to four basic layers starting with the physical layer. This is your 802.11a, b, g, and now n when you're talking about wireless technology. The next link then is your data link layer. And these two layers together represent what we commonly refer to as ethernet. The next layer is the network layer. The network layer is your IP or IPX layer, and basically it is designed to take care of assigning the correct IP or IPX addresses for routing various packets of information. The next layer is the transport layer, and the transport layer is concerned with just that, the efficient and reliable transportation of the various data packets from one network to another. In the session, presentation, and application layers, you have various overlapping layers for things like HTTP, uh, FTP, and DNS. Each of the various layers play a vital role when you both send a request and receive an answer back. So what's the pathway look like when you send a message from your computer to try to either send an email message or retrieve a web page? Well, it goes something like this. From your laptop, you send out a signal to your wireless receiver, which in turn is hooked up to your modem. The modem transfers that signal via cabling to your internet service provider. Now we're on the net, and the internet service provider is going to connect with the DNS or domain name server, which will link up to the web server that has the page that you're looking for. 
once that page has been identified and the request has been accepted, then the web server will send back to you the information that you desire. So network topology refers to how the network is structured or set up. And there's a variety of different ways to do this, as you can see from the diagram here. You've got the ring, mesh, star, line, tree, and bus. And then, of course, you've got fully connected. Ultimately, we're all fully connected via the Internet. But when you're talking about setting up your LAN network, you need to decide what is going to be the best configuration for you. And each of the various configurations has advantages and disadvantages based on expense, speed, and quality of signal. So, of course, when we're talking about the Internet, security is really, really important. Hence the need for firewalls. Now, a really intricate description of what a firewall does and how it works is not really appropriate for this particular tutorial. Suffice it to say that a firewall acts as a barrier between your personal local area network and the wide area network and other computers that might try to access your information. The firewall basically determines what information gets in and out of the network. Firewalls are typically included on many operating system software and they can also be found in the hardware of some routers. So that said, how exactly does my school local area network slash wireless local area network differ from my home area network? Well, obviously, my school's network is far more complex and complicated, as you can see from the pictures here. These are actual pictures from some of the network hardware that is located at our school in the various communications closets around the campus. You also have pictured here a wireless access point. Recently our school district retrofitted the school with wireless access points in every room and they did this throughout the district not just at our campus thus really expanding our wireless capabilities drastically. Uh, and then, of course, we have pictured your typical cable connection. Uh, most classrooms have several of these cable connections throughout the classroom to allow for student computers. However, most classrooms do not have a bank of student computers in them. We have what we would call a cow or computer on wheels instead. Thus, the wireless access points in each of the classrooms. The school network serves over 500 potential workstations, counting teacher stations, potential student computers, computer labs, and other machines for administration. And so that and that doesn't count the possibility of all the smartphones that are in students' pockets. So what are the other main differences between uh, being on our own home network versus being on the school network is the fact that the home network would be what we would call a peer-to-peer -peer network. In other words, I'm just communicating in between various computers that are on the same level. Whereas on the school network, we're on a client-server network. And one of the advantages to that is that I have access to a variety of different drives. So as you can see pictured here, on my network, I have access to a employee drive, an administrative drive, and as well as various work drives for students. So there's a lot of additional storage space on the shared servers that are part of that larger network. So this concludes our basic crash course in networking. Thanks for watching.